I hope you enjoyed your five minute break. Now we're gonna jump on into materials used in pedicuring. One of the most common stereotypical materials is the toe separator. So the toe separator is made from a foam, rubber, or even cotton, and they're used to keep toes apart while polishing the toenails because typically your feet are not widespread apart. You wanna avoid the polish from touching each other, so it's gonna hold your nails out like that, make it easier to paint. So also know that since toenail separators, obviously they can't be cleaned and disinfected and reused, that would be gross. You can toss them, or if the client wants to take them, they can take them. Know that pedicure slippers are single-use paper or foam slippers that are provided for those clients who have not worn open-toed shoes and want to avoid smudging their newly applied toenail polish. They are specially designed not to touch the nails while being worn. Gloves. Gloves can be used when you're applying exfoliators, when you're putting on masks. Anytime you're using an abrasive scrub, you want to wear gloves because you don't want to expose your hands to that chemical. If you repeatedly expose your hands to that chemical, you'll actually strip away the skin on your hands, causing dryness. And if you get any chemical in there, it's going to burn. So the book recommends that all cosmetologists wear gloves throughout a pedicure service. Typically, I only wore them when we had to do these scrubs and most other places only wear gloves when you're doing a scrub. In my own opinion, it's very rare for someone to wear gloves throughout the entire service. Um, but if you are very uh, scared of working on someone's feet, if they're kind of gross, you can wear gloves. That is obviously allowed. No one can tell you no to that. Know that if a client or cosmetologist is allergic to latex, nitro gloves should be worn. Should be a refresher from our previous chapter. And know that... Um, it's important to realize that when you think about using a, a solution to clean something that doesn't replace basic sanitation, the caution box states that no additive that is used in water during a pedicure soak will kill pathogen and replace your obligation to clean and disinfect the equipment and implements after the pedicure. Any chemical that is strong enough to adequately kill pathogens is not safe for contact with the skin. Disinfectants must never be placed in a foot bath with your client's feet in them. That can harm the skin. Pedigree cleaner is so strong, I remember someone that was in my cosmetology class poured it into a glass basin and it actually etched up the glass. That's how strong it was. So professional pedicure products. These are gonna be very similar to what we're using on the hands. You have foot soaks, exfoliating scrubs, pedicure lotions and creams, callus softeners, and masks. Also know that you wanna avoid excessively abrasive scrubs since they may leave tiny invisible scratches in the client's skin that can be portals of entry for pathogenic microorganisms. Portals of entry are openings in the skin caused by damage during professional services and they might not even hurt. Half the time you don't even realize you have microcuts. So foot soaks are products containing gentle soaps, moisturizers, and other additives and they're used in the pedicure to cleanse and soften the skin. And a good foot soak product is gentle but effective and thoroughly cleans and deodorizes the feet. It is better to use professionally formulated products because other products may be harsh on the skin. The soak sets the stage the rest of the pedicure, so make sure you have a high quality of product. Some of them are seasonal. You can even use aromatherapy. Some clients, or not some clients, some professionals add leaves and petals to the pedicure bath to create the ambiance of a healing service with the Whirlpool. It's just so relaxing. They have detoxing soaks. There's all kinds of soaks that could be used for different things. So the next product is exfoliating scrubs, just like you're using on your hand or your face. These are gritty lotions. They're massaged onto the foot and legs to remove dry, flaky skin and reduce calluses. They leave the skin feeling smoother and moisturized. Know that exfoliating scrubs are usually water-based lotions that contain an abrasive agent as the exfoliating agent. Sea sand, ground apricot kernels, pumice quartz crystals, jojoba beads, and polyphenylene beads are all exfoliating agents that may be found in pedicure scrubs. Scrubs also contain moisturizers which help condition the skin. One of my personal favorites is the sea salt one, or no, not the sea salt one, Himalayan salt one. There is a sea salt one, I think, but the Himalayan, the pink Himalayan salt ones where you scrub the feet is so relaxing to the client and it leaves the nice mineral deposits that your skin needs for nutrients. So you can do that one. Really um, shop around out there. Always get like two or three of them, several of them, so you can give the client you know, two or three choices and that makes them feel special. Like, oh, you care. Like, hey, which one would you like to use today? And masks, just like masks on the face, are concentrated treatment products often composed of mineral clays, moisturizing agents, skin softeners, aromatherapy oil extracts, and other botanical ingredients and beneficial ingredients to cleanse, exfoliate, tighten, tone, hydrate, and nourish the skin. They are highly valued by clients and masks are applied to skin and left in place for five to 10 minutes. Some of them 
will be left on for the full 10 minutes to allow full penetration of the ingredients. Menthol, mint, cucumber, and other ingredients are very popular in foot masks. They even have like AHA ones that will cause the skin on the, I mean BHA ones that will cause the skin on the feet to peel. Also know too that any product for the feet, you wanna just use it on the feet. It may be way too abrasive to use in the face. And I have to tell you this because um, at my previous job, we had an adult skincare program and the head instructor was out. So what happened was the person that came to fill her place was I think only two years out of esthetician school and her information was not correct. She told a student they could use foot care stuff on their face and she actually used a foot scrub on a student's face. And I was like, really? No, not good. Um, yeah, that was bad. So when in doubt, if something says foot, do not put it on your face. It's going to be abrasive. Should be common sense, but always got to put that out there. Foot lotions or creams, they're going to be important to moisturize the legs and feet, soften calluses, and they are also formulated as home care products for maintenance of the service and improvement of the skin. Typically, you can send the client home with at-home products like the salt scrub at a lesser degree or instruct them how to use it or any foot lotion that goes along with it because it will be a really good selling product, a really good way to get retail done in the salon. And you can also retail them a few polish colors if they want to touch up their polish at home. Know that um, cosmetologists who work in a podiatry or medical office will be introduced to treatment level lotions and creams, which are associated with the improvement of medical conditions of the feet. You want to get to know the product line and know that there's a difference between product education and actual real education. So you, it's good to have both. You want to know how to use a product line, but you also want to know the science behind it as to why it works. And lastly, the last product is callus softeners. These are professional strength callus softeners and they are designed to soften and smooth thick tissue called calluses. They are applied directly to the client's heels over pressure point calluses. They are left on for a short period of time according to the manufacturer's directions. After the product softens a callus, it is more easily reduced and smoothed with files or paddles. I've had students ask me this, it's a really good question, on the pH of callus softeners. Um, I've had two experiences where I pH tested one and it was alkaline and the other one was acidic. So you really want to find out why it works. Typically, if it's on the more acid side, it has to be very strong acid, lower on the pH scale. Out of our normal acid mantle range, it's going to take longer to work, but it may be a little bit gentler. And a more alkaline one is going to soften and swell that tissue, making it easier to scrape off. So it can work in both directions, but I want to guess the latter being the more alkaline one is more common. And that's my own professional guess on that. This is a little funny. They talk about wearing eye protective wear and pouring callus removal or cuticle remover. Um, I guess if you really feel like you have to, I've never done that, but know that if you get it in your eye, it's going to be corrosive and burn. So just be careful. And they talk about using um, pedicures. They have this little section called about pedicures. They'll give you your basic pedicure procedure. Make sure you go over that. So know that some clients may be very choosy about what they want. Get to know your client. When you choose your pedicure products, choose them accordingly to what you want to get done. And always check with the company's quality education because if you have a company that is not educating you, it's probably time to change lines. Also know that podiatry is a study of feet and the podiatrist is an MD with specialized training that will treat the disorders of the feet. Know that there are different additional certifications you can do. Um, certain clients will have to be referred to a podiatrist or they'll be deemed at risk by a podiatrist and they'll usually disclose this to you. And there's licensed professionals who have taken advantage of advanced education to learn to perform safe pedicures and at-risk clients. And if you're interested in the special technology, make sure your state offers this because I don't know if my state does. But one of them is called an ANT, an Advanced Nail Technician, A-N-T. An ant is a salon-based nail technician who has completed advanced training in how to work safely on at-risk patients. Podiatrists and physicians refer their patients to ants for pedicures, feeling confident that their patients will be safe from harm and infection. Another specialty is the MNT, sometimes I call it mint. It's the medical nail technician. Now your MNT may be available for cosmetologists who wish to work in medical offices and who have taken extensive training. These new specialties take nail care, nail care to a whole new level and expand professional possibilities for cosmetologists interested in specializing in nail care. Know that the ANT and the MMT is not something that you'll just get and you'll be in the field. You have to have either your 
a nail tech license, esthetician license, or cosmetology license. This is extra training that you get on top of your license. Kind of like you can do an advanced esthetician training if you're a cosmetologist if you want to learn advanced techniques. So after you get licensing, you will get this education. So also know your service menu is very important. You want to know what services you offer. Some clients only want one thing like a foot soak and you can break down the prices of it. You can just do foot soak only or just nail polish removing. Some clients don't want the full pedicure with the bath. They just want their nail polish changed and you can like charge, making numbers up here, $20. Um, if you want a partial pedicure or what they call an express pedicure, which is just a quick soak, massage, and exfoliator, that's it. You can charge accordingly to that. Some clients may be coming in on a lunch break, quickly eating their lunch, and you can service them. Um, and know that uh, other clients want a full-on massage for stress, so you always want to, you know, talk to your client what they want. Knowing your clientele is important. Typically, younger clients are going to want the fun, fancy nail art for the toenails, whereas your older clients, mm, maybe not. Also know that interaction during the service is important. Some clients just want to come there to relax, and if they're sitting there relaxing, you don't want to be talking their ear off because that will irritate them. Read their body language. If they're sitting like this with their eyes closed and they're just breathing in gently, don't interrupt them. If your client comes in with their headphones on, they're playing their Nintendo Switch, like that one commercial, don't interrupt them either. But if your client comes in, you know who they are, and they're friendly, and they want to talk with you, engage with them. Engage in their conversation. Have a good time. This really um, it takes a lot of body language to read. You want to be aware. You want to be self-aware of yourself, how you're coming across, and you want to be aware of the client and how they're acting. Know that um, you don't want distractions such as phone calls, and this is typically, I guess, on the you know your end. I've never heard of places that get offended if people answer their phone in the pedicure thing. In fact, I'd find that kind of like rude to ask a client, hey, can you put your phone away, unless you're like screaming at someone on the phone violently, um, in which case that's a whole different story. But you don't want your phone on, obviously. You don't want to be answering your phone near the pedicure bath, dropping your phone in. You don't want to be charging your phone near the pedicure bath. That's an electrical hazard, common sense. Um, and if you're distracted, you can cause an injury, so don't be distracted. I had someone who I've witnessed be distracted actually nip someone too deep on the pedicure thing, and she went like this. The client screamed and practically fell out of the pedicure bath. I've also had an angry client come into the student salon. Um, <laughs> She missed the pedicure bowl. She went to go sit down and she did a full 360 because she was too busy yelling obscenities and she fell right into the bowl. And in that case, it was very hard for me to contain my nervous laugh. So if you do have a nervous laugh, always make sure you're explained to the client. Lesson learned there that I forgot to mention in previous chapters. Um, also know that you, you, when you want to rebook with your client with scheduling, don't give them the option to book through the phone. Say, hey, when can I rebook you? Or when is a good date to book you down? What people do when this drives them crazy, they always give the client the option, which don't give them any wiggle room. They'll say, would you like to rebook at the front or would you like to call in? You've just given your client the out just to not make the appointment. So when you make them feel like obligated to make their appointment, then they're more likely to come back. So also read the FYI when they talk about how to perform the pedicure with how you grasp the foot. Typically, you're going to grasp the foot just like this. You want to use firm pressure if you're too light. That can make the client feel like their feet are being tickled, and that can be very uncomfortable. Some clients may laugh and like flail their feet. So typically, firmer touch is better with the feet, unless the client says otherwise. You also want to advise your clients not to shave their legs within 48 hours before the pedicure, because shaving increases the tiny micro cuts that can lead to infection. In the real world, we're not really going to do this. I'm just giving you guys a heads up, because a lot of people learn this in school, and they try to repeat that when they go out. Typically, your clients are aware of what to do and what not to do. Um, but if they are diabetic, it is worth, you know, mentioning that, hey, you know, I know you might be immunocompromised, just giving the heads up that you don't want to shave, you know, 48 hours before you come back. Right? So also know that you want to get your pedicure time into 45 minutes if the whole service is an hour because that gives you time for the consultation. You want to work on working effectively. Practice the skills and with time, speed comes. Don't be stressed if you mess up. It's going to take a ton of mess ups to get a success. Also know that the basic pedicure in most salons don't include a leg massage. A spa pedicure usually does. Pedicures that involve the leg massage are usually longer, more upscale, and they charge more. The basic pedicure is about 45 minutes. But with the spa pedicure, it's going to increase the time to half an hour longer. So it could be up to an hour or an hour and 15 minutes. You don't want to cram too much into a pedicure experience because if you try to cram, you're going to rush and that will not be relaxing for a client. 
what I will do here is I will give you guys an early five minute break and we're gonna segue into the specific types of pedicures and the spot pedicures.